butterfly creating a hurricane. Scientists have the following theory. Suppose a butterfly flaps its wings in New Mexico. This effect causes a hurricane in China. This may take a considerable amount of time. Yet if the butterfly didn't flap its wings exactly at the right point in time, the hurricane would never have happened. This is known as chaos theory. We have seen this in our wars. One small incident in a faraway part of the world sparks a worldwide war. Why don't we create a spark of peace inside of us? If we all did that, it may be an incredible butterfly effect will take place. Mankind will see the threat tying us all together. There is no difference between you and me. You have nothing to lose on this path, except your anger, hatred, and intolerance. These are the baggage mankind has carried for thousands of years. War is obsolete. The United States spends about 60% of its budget on defense. Yet, we can't win the war in Afghanistan. We have been there for over 18 years. We have spent trillions of dollars, and yet, it's a losing battle. We could have spent that money helping our own country grow. That money could have helped Afghani, Afghanistan people su succeed in life. We did that for the Germans and the Japanese. Look where they are today. They were totally transformed. This spiritual path is the most practical. We would make laws that would benefit all. Not the current system, with the richest 1% make even more money. In the meantime, millions of Americans, who in the past got a significant refund, had to pay thousands more. Where's the justice in this? We need to kick out all politicians who are in bed with the rich. If you can't take care of the American people, you don't belong in office. We can change the system by voting, by voting them out of office. A new day is coming. The pickering has to stop. We are all Americans. We all want a better country for our kids and grandkids. It's time to let go of our negative baggage. We need to be mature adults. Currently, Americans are totally divided. We must go beyond that. Families are being torn apart. We have lost our dignity. If you don't believe in my context, my concepts, you are an evil person. We need to listen to each other. We have different points of views. We don't have to flame each other. Remember, there is a threat of love tying us all together. Ponder this over. Imagine the universe is timeless. Just think, there may be ancient civilizations in the past on a small planet a long ways away. Imagine they went through the same things we did. They went through their wars. They reached a point where they could either blow their world apart or bring peace to their planet. God does not save us. We must save ourselves. 
Can you imagine if these ancient ones all realized their true nature? What kind of lessons can we learn from them? What kind of wisdom do they have? Is the entire universe built so we have the opportunity to discover our true nature? The choice is up to us. We have never been held back from God. We hold ourselves back. What is the greatest strength? It's easy to lash out to others. But how easy, easy is it to hold on to yourself and refuse to participate in anger? Is strength measured by brute force? Brute force is not the answer. Brute force is like a rock, powerful yes, but inner strength is like water. Over time, it will dissolve the rock. Man has relied on brute force for so long. Maybe in this arena, Darwin's story doesn't hold so well. How far have we progressed? Do we need our animals' instincts? Do we need to lash out and have wars? Maybe we need to discover our true inner strength. Man will be gentle, yet strong. He will drop his chains. We come into this world knowing we are the universe. Over time, we have forgotten our true nature. We create masks to reflect who we think we are. Over time, we play stupid games with one another. My mask is better than yours. I'm declaring war on you. I don't like your mask. I'm going to gossip about you. I like your mask. I'm still going to gossip about you. The great masters have said, take off your mask. Discover your true nature. Remember who you were before you were born. The tapes. If you want to change your life, you must cut your old tapes. If you don't, the same old tapes will be repeated over and over again. How can you expect to change if the same tape is playing over and over again? Just look at our history. War, war, and war. We never have permanent peace. In order for there to be peace on earth, you must discover your piece of the puzzle. You are essential to make the puzzle complete. You can't give responsibility for your peace to someone else. It doesn't work that way. Ponder this over. Find out how you can cut your old tapes. Throughout history, man has stumbled in the dark. Man is distrustful with one another. War is the norm. I'll take what is mine. This land belongs to me. I'm going to rule you. Darkness is in the land. There is a lantern within us all. It is not lit. Now is the time to go light the lantern. This light will wake up mankind. It will dispel the darkness around. Peace will come to earth when mankind lights the lantern within his heart. Is this the new dawning of man? Have we reached a point in history where we can say, let's get rid of the old. War has raged on this planet and what has it created? 
another war. We should have blown up the planet by now. Armageddon should have come and his land would have been barren. Yes, a new dawning of man is coming. You just wait and see. The entire universe is cheering for us. The new dawn of man is coming. At times, I think newborn mothers should be in the dominant force in ruling us. Imagine, a newborn mother will never want her infant to go to war. She would say, war is obsolete. Let's find a better way to solve this problem. A mother has the best interest to educate the children. She doesn't want anyone to go home. Both sides of the parties wouldn't fight one another. Mothers know how to compromise. They have the best interest in mind. They would have <coughs> term limits so nobody would get greedy and power. We have seen what happens today with term limits. A mother would have patience, tolerance, compassion, and love. These are the qualities which are needed by the rulers today. We do not need rulers who have no respect for one another. We don't need rulers who mock those who disagree with you. <coughs> we don't need rulers who say, I could shoot someone in the street and they would still vote for me. We need to change. I like my solution. Last night, I watched the evening news on Christmas Day. The news for the day was man doing good deeds for one another. No shooting or murder was shown. Just simple acts of kindness. Just one human being helping out another. We need to see this more on TV. I know violence sounds. Yet this goes beyond the money. Let's create hope in the news. Let's change the channel of violence to a channel of good deeds. Imagine that every night we would watch good news. How much would our attitude to the world change? Random acts of kindness to our fellow man. A simple smile to someone who is sad. Helping, helping an elderly person cross the street. If we all perform good deeds with one another, this world would change. There would be peace on earth. Is our life on remote control? We are so driven and distracted by our devices. We can't live without our cell phones. People have died from texting. Is it really worth that message you texted while you died so young? We have completely forgotten our true nature. Okay, so Facebook is cool. But living your life moment by moment is really cool. You are the universe. Yet your life is on remote control. What could be sadder? You can solve this puzzle. I got to tell you that you are a miracle. You are alive. We take it for granted, yet at the time of death, one sees how precious our breath is. Nobody can escape it. I know it may seem like I'm a broken record. All the great masters are talking about the same thing. They have conveyed the message in different manners all throughout the world. Life is precious. Know why you are alive. 
I keep on saying the spiritual path is the most practical path. Why do I keep on saying this? Imagine most of our lives we are skimming the surface on the ocean of life. The wise man dives deep into the ocean of life and becomes one with it. I love the following saying from dear old Albert Einstein. I think 99 times and find nothing. I stop thinking, swim in silence, and the truth comes to me. This is a very wise man who said this. He understood the law of silence. You can't think your way to God. Yet by learning how to be silent, you can find God. In the silence lies the vast mysteries of life. I have seen many times before the following. You are the universe. You just don't know it. You can never think this over and find the answer to this riddle. The only way to understand this riddle is to swim in silence, just like good old Albert said. I find Albert to be a genius on two levels. He was a, gen a genius in the sciences and he understood the law of silence. Combine both of these together and you have a true human being. You, man, divide equals divine mind. Man equals mind. Big difference. Albert lived in the center of the hurricane. He lived in stillness. Man has yet to learn truly to live in silence. Yes, millions of people are already on this path. But this knowledge still hasn't been accepted into mass consciousness. When it does, the world will really start to change in a beautiful way. Kindness will take over. Patience and tolerance will take over. Love for one another will take over. When man truly understands that war is obsolete, a huge shift will take place. War it's past dead energy. We will look at war, BC, and peace, AD. We will stop and ask ourselves, how did we ever fight in the first place? But first, we need to learn how to swim and dive in the ocean of life. There are millions of people on this planet saying the same thing. This is not my message. This message is brought forth from millions of people. This message comes from the yearning of mankind. We know that we are missing something. We can't figure it out. It is at our fingertips, yet we can't quite touch it. That makes us frustrated. Why can't I find the answer? Remember what dear old Albert said. I think 99 times and find nothing. I stop thinking, swim in silence, and the truth comes to me. You can solve this puzzle. The answer lies within. Can you imagine a time when there would be no unwanted children in this world? Can you imagine a world where rape no longer existed. Can you imagine the world where there is no war or crime? How can we achieve that? Through kindness. You see, if the world was kind, these problems would go away. They would simply vanish through time. I'm not saying that there would be, never be conflicts. Yes, there will. But they will be solved through peaceful solutions, not through acts of war. You see, kindness 
greatest intelligence of life. Can you imagine how the world would change if every child on earth was treated with kindness? And there would be no more bullies on this planet. This world would transform. We would build our societies around the richness of education. Education would be free. It is a birthright. Teachers would be paid extremely well. Currently, United States teachers are one of the least paid professions. This has got to change. Through kindness, our politicians will realize this, that small changes will occur in our education system. Kindness is a vessel where change can come for the benefit of all. The poor districts and the rich districts will have the highest education system for all. This means these terrible schools that are in poor neighborhoods will over time transform into new and innovative ways of teaching. The students would love to come to school and learn. Crime would be virtually non-existent. School shooting would be a thing of the past. Why would you have a gun if war and crime did not exist? Imagine a world like this. As John Lennon once said, you may see I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Yes, this dream may take generations, and we don't talk about it and offer suggestions on how to solve the problems we will never get anywhere. Kindness is the solution. Today in America, school shootings are an epidemic. I can't imagine going to school and having to worry that someone may come in with an automatic rifle and start killing people. Millions of the schools today have metal detectors. How can you learn in this environment? No wonder our schools are failing. Some of these schools are outright dangerous. How can a student thrive in this situation? There are thousands of great teachers out there, but unfortunately, they are sailing a boat without a rudder. When the U.S. spends more on defense than the top 12 countries spend, something is wrong. Look at the past. When any great country spends more money on defense than anything else, this was the start of the downfall of the country. History shows us time and time again. It's like playing the same track over and over. Without kindness, we'll be doing the same thing over and over again. Kindness is the glue which holds the entire universe together. As a world, we're doomed if we carry the old baggage of anger and war. So many cities in the United States are like war zones. Murders occur every single day. Children afraid of walking down the streets. Children get shot walking to and from school. Children get shot by random shooters. The bullets were intended for someone else, but unfortunately, they were hit. Where, where does all this end? Is this normal? We almost take it for granted. If you don't live in these cities, we brush it off. Yet, we all must change. Every person must change. We need a political system to change. We need every system in America to change. If we don't, we will continue to decay. It's strange that kindness is all around. It is everywhere. Inside our DNA lies kindness. Everything you see lies the field of kindness. Behind your breath and thoughts lie kindness. Yet, we are not trained to tap into this field consciously. We all experience kindness at some point or another, yet we don't know how to consciously drink from the cup of kindness moment by moment in life. What would happen if the entire world at large could do this? Going back to our education system, we could totally transform America if our students were well educated. 
If every student had the education to learn and go to college, our society would change for the better. We can't have our education continue in this manner. Currently, we have administration which gives lip service. Without kindness, we can never change truly. We can make laws, we can try to enforce the laws, but without kindness, we as a nation are at a standstill. Look at the United States today. We are totally divided, us versus them. Gasoline is constantly put on the fire. We have a president who loves that. Look, I'm not Republican or Democrat. Both sides are divided. Both sides are wearing tainted glasses. Both sides are angry and fighting with one another. In this situation, we as a nation is lost. We have forgotten our soul. I remember in the 60s hearing stories about the debates between the two parties. They were heated debates, yet at the end of the day, they could go to a bar and give a toast to each other. They could let bygones be bygones. Currently, both sides of the party hate each other and can't compromise. I'm not saying all members of Congress do this, but let's face it, this is what we see. We are living in a world we can see a way out of the mess we created. We don't see that we all created this mess. Only by pulling our internal needs can we clean up the mess that we created. Our inside awareness dictates the world around us. If we are angry inside and we see a Facebook post that we don't like, we will flay the post. We will just pass on the anger. We are putting gasoline on the fire. We need to learn how to diffuse the situation by kindness. This is probably the hardest thing to do, yet it's the only way out for our world to continue. It's so easy to be angry. Anybody can do it, but to be kind when someone is shouting in anger at you is very difficult. Ponder these words. You are stardust. Hi kids, let's gather around the campfire. Wow, look at the millions of stars in the sky. Did you know that you are stardust? You came from the stars. Here's the kicker. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Your true nature is kindness. Your true nature is love and compassion. This story begins a long time ago. In fact, millions of years ago. Imagine there was a planet much like Earth. They went through the same craziness that man has gone through. War was rampant throughout the land. Quite frankly, people were good, but their leaders, leaders, not so good. They were only interested in power and greed. Yet, your true nature is kindness. Life is like a grand hide-and-seek game. In order for the civilization to truly mature, they must discover the diamond inside. Only by discovering kindness inside will you truly be kind in your life. You can be highly advanced in technology, but if you don't get along with others, you're missing the point in life. Did you know? that it takes around a million years for an entire civilization to go from darkness to light. That's a long time. Yet in the end, heaven truly comes to earth. 
Imagine a world where everyone gets along with each other. Imagine being in school and there are no bullies. Nobody will ever pick on you or call you names. This is gone from the culture a long time ago. You see, the kids and adults could literally see the web of all life tying us all together. This web is true love. They had an interesting way to teach one another. They didn't have desks all lined up in rows. The teacher was teaching ahead of the classroom. They taught in nature under a huge tree. There's a huge circle where the kids would sit around. The teacher would slowly teach and walk around the circle. Each day, the kids would move to a different part of the circle, so they would sit beside someone different. This helped prevent clicks. The children loved to learn. They were highly advanced. Can you imagine that every kid knew he was the universe and knew it from experience? She was the sun, moon, and stars walking around in a human body. How would you like to create rainbows in the sky using your hand? Not only that, but each rainbow played an incredible melody. Groups of children would have an orchestra in the sky. We never heard such sweet melodies. It's like the universe itself was playing music. In fact, it was. The kids were in tune with the universe. Beethoven would have loved it. Each one of the kids was incredible conductors. Imagine a world where there's no crime, there's no poverty, no lack of food, no illness. You see, once the civilization understands and experiences the laws of the universe, all these problems can be solved. Yes, it takes around a million years. Unfortunately, some worlds don't make it. They have a tendency to blow themselves up. You see, we have free will. You can change for the better, or you can destroy yourself. Quite frankly, those are the two options. There is a point where each person decides. Imagine at a certain point your world starts to change dramatically. Slowly, I mean slowly, you begin to look transparent much like Casper the Friendly Ghost. You start to be more multidimensional in nature. You are no longer physical. You have become pure energy in nature. Now the fun comes. Imagine going anywhere in the universe in less than a second. How's that for a cosmic ride? Talk about a roller coaster ride. You and your friends can go anywhere in less than a second. Imagine the entire knowledge of the universe is inside. What does that mean? It means as a kid, you are extremely wise. You are not limited. You don't have to learn your ABCs. You have a PhD from the universe. You are wise beyond belief. This is your true nature. You are wise and kind. You have learned that without kindness, you never can be wise. Nature only gives her secrets when you are kind. Nature is not a bully or mock one another. Here's the kicker. You still are an individual, yet at the same time, you are one with the universe. Now, that's a paradox. Imagine a cosmic soup. It has many different ingredients, yet you can't take out a certain ingredient. We are talking about quantum energy. Boy, Einstein would have loved this. Imagine in his mind he created those theories. How would it be if he had the capability to imagine them in his mind at the same time, practically becoming the experiment? Imagine E equals MC squared. He can go from mass to pure energy and back to mass again. Now, that would be exciting. Inside of you lies the laboratory of life. Imagine all sorts of incredible inventions would be developed. 
When a civilization lines itself with the universe, all sorts of incredible inventions will happen. You see, nature will trust you. In our present day world, we let the genie out of the bottle. We create nuclear bombs. Now we have a threat that we can destroy the entire world. We don't know how to put the genie back inside the bottle. The only way out of this creation is to find the jewel inside. It's been there the entire time. Remember, you are a piece of the puzzle. One million years from now. Wow. Mankind did it. They became a kind man. You wouldn't recognize the change in mankind. War is a thing of the past. Gone are the negative emotions of anger, greed, lust for power. Mankind pulled out all the negative weeds once and for all. Remember, slogan, you are the universe. You just don't know it. Well, mankind does now. Signpost of God is all around you. You just don't see it. Well, society and the world at large sees the signpost all around. It's a glorious day in the universe. Mankind has woke up from their slumber. The hide and seek game is over. Mankind is united with the universe. You could say the universe and mankind is one and the same. Can you imagine being the sun, the moon, and stars walking around in the human body? Disease is a thing of the past. Mankind can literally live as long as the dragons. Imagine living for five to ten thousand years. Can you imagine no more conflict, no more bullies, no more crime, no more poverty, no more thrown garbage in the ocean, no more pollution. Mankind has reached a state to solve any problems. There is no us versus them, no more divisions. Each person is recognized as being different, and yet, at the same time, there is unity. You see, their awareness is one. They could not only divide and try and control others. <coughs> now can you do that when you see through the eyes of everyone? Now that's the sight to be uphold. You see through your eyes. And at the same time, you see through the eyes of others. It took a long time for this to occur. 2012 was the turning point. Many people on Earth at this time didn't know if humanity was going to blow itself up or not. Many people felt that mankind passed the marker where man would ultimately discover the signpost of life. Life was grand. Can you imagine being the greatest sort of life? Mankind was in tune with the Earth Gaia. You could say they were one and the same. Talk about changes. In the 20th century, man had no regard for the land. They polluted the entire Earth. They were sawing off the branch. They were sitting on it. Year by year, man changed their ways. Man became tolerant of each other. Man started to listen to one another. Man became kind. Slowly, I mean slowly, mankind woke up from their slumber. The more man woke up, the more the universe would share its secrets. You see, these secrets could only be, could be used for good or bad. The keys aren't just given to just anybody. 
You have to be in alignment with the universe to receive them. Century by century, mankind evolved. Science and religion merged with one another. Meditation was a common occurrence. Mankind discovered the laboratory within. Mankind started to learn how to be in constant meditation 24 hours a day. Mankind was on an inner and external journey. Over time, mankind knew that they came from the stars. They knew they were stars. They had recognition where they came from. Imagine thinking you were orphans and meeting your parents for the first time. Well, this happened to humanity. Slowly, I mean slowly, they came to discover where they came from and to once again communicate with their parents. You see, their parents were always there, but they didn't have the eyes to see. You see, even down to their DNA, the Pleiadians were there. They were the ones who seeded mankind, yet they were hidden until we woke up. This is the game of life. When a civilization becomes mature enough and responsible, you help the universe in the game, grand game of hide and seek. You help the universe to evolve. What a grand game this is. Throughout history, the great masters have come to talk about the hide and seek game. It's only by your free will can you wake up. You are a piece of the puzzle. Well, humanity discovered their piece of the puzzle. The entire puzzle was put together. Granted, it took a very long time, yet for the universe, it's only a blinking of an eye. Can you imagine being one with the quantum energy of love? You can go anywhere in the universe in less than a second. All knowledge would be known. This is how they discovered they were stardust. This is how they discovered their parents never left them. They were there all along, but we couldn't see them. Mankind awoke to thousands of wows. They discovered their, these truths were always there, but they didn't have the eyes to see. What an incredible day when they woke up from their slumber. Every day, it was like Christmas. Brand new presents were under the tree of life. What can I discover today? What can I create today? You see, life is not boring, but we can be boring. It's a state of mind. Mankind completely changed his thinking. He became a creative force in the universe. He was in tune with the universe. He was in sync with the universe. He was the universe. Wow! Can you imagine that? But when mankind did this, the entire universe celebrated. They have waited for this moment for eternity. There's grand parties all throughout the universe. Did you know the planet Earth reached its goal? Well, of course they knew. They were the universe. Yet an incredible event occurred. It was like winning the Super Bowl of life. There were billions of beings hoping and assisting mankind on this journey of life. And they did it. They didn't blow themselves up. Wow, what a game of life. They solved the grand puzzle of life. No words can describe the joy in the universe. You see, the entire universe is alive. We just see empty space in the sky, yet the entire universe is conscious and aware. Mankind finally reached the highest levels of the civilization. They pulled out all connected weeds and discovered the universe inside. You could say the universe was proud, just like a mother or father would be proud when you did something incredible. That's my boy, that's my girl. You see, the universe coaches us in life. It is always there on the sidelines. You are never alone. You may think so, but you're not. Imagine the surprise to you and the universe when you wake up. Wow, what a grand celebration. Your coach is ecstatic. 
see? You see? What an incredible game she played? The entire universe roars. Ripples of joy reverberate throughout the universe. It is felt all over the universe. It is a crowning moment in time. Imagine the joy when Buddha enlightenment. Enlightenment. Wow. The celebrations are still going on. It's like when Roger Bannister ran under the four minute mile. People said it couldn't be done. Well, he did it. Soon afterwards, even some high schoolers could do it. Buddha showed it could be done. Now slowly people awaken up from their slumber. Christ was another great example. He showed humanity the way. The kingdom of heaven lies within. What could be more incredible than that? This is the incredible journey of life. Where will humanity go from here? You, you will see in the next chapter. 10 million years from now. Wow, a lot has happened since 2012. That was a turning point in human history. As we saw in the last chapter, all of humanity lived in peace and harmony. They discovered the jewel in life. They were one with the universe. After a period of time, give or take a million years, they were presented with a new mission. They didn't have to accept this mission. Remember, they have free will. The mission was to help jumpstart another planet along its journey in life. There was a new planet that was a new kid on the block. They had the building blocks to support life. Humankind was asked if they wanted to help and assist along the way. Just like the planet Earth got existence from the stars, this planet had the same opportunity to assist. This planet was around for over a billion years or more, so the foundation was already set up. Health and existence was already there. But here's the kicker. They wanted the humans to help and assist future humans on this planet. They wanted to have their DNA for these new humans. I think you get the picture. Inside of these new humans lie their parents and the secrets of the universe. Imagine this world going through the same struggles we did. The same darkness had to be overcome. More poverty and greed would have to be overcome. The same craziness. You even had the same kind of old masters coming down to try to, to help humanity. The rules were simple. They had free will. They would decide ultimately whether they blew themselves up or find the puzzle within. I don't mean to be dramatic, but that's the truth. You might say, how is this possible? How could humans on Earth help someone this way? Well, when you are the sun, moon, and stars, you can be anywhere. You can lie inside a DNA of man. Isn't that incredible? The hide and seek game goes on forever. We can partake in this game and help another world in discovering themselves. Yes, it takes time. We have all the time in the world. Remember, you are eternal. Remember, the signposts are all around. How would you like to help set up the signposts in this brand new world? The signposts can only be seen by the pure in heart. Great teachers and nobodies will come upon the land, helping man to discover this true nature. As you know, the planet Earth had a great journey they walked through. Many people thought back then that Earth didn't have a chance. Well, think again. Against all obstacles, man overcome these obstacles and found the puzzles. Humans are very kind and compassionate. They love the idea to help transform another world. So with the same care they received from their parents, they had the same care for their children. They had unlimited love and compassion for this planet. They didn't judge. Remember, God and the universe do not judge. 
but they gave small and helpful hints along the way. They provided guidance, much like a coach. They couldn't play the game for you, but they could give incredible advice. Slowly, I mean slowly, the journey of life continued. Two steps forward, one step backwards. Man learns in every step he takes. They had the same battles of life we did. Nobody gets a free ride. Yes, there were moments when nobody knew if they were going to survive or not. But slowly, I mean slowly, man was waking up one by one. This took a good million years. It was quite the Greek odyssey. Homer, he would have been proud. This was quite the journey had lasted over a million years. They didn't blow themselves up. As a matter of fact, they became one with the universe. They solved the puzzle of life with a little help from our friends. Wink, wink, you and I were there as proud parents. The entire universe gave standing ovation. You see, eventually all children leave the chicken coop and fly into the sky. In this case, the stars. You see, another journey, another world needs our help. We would never have it any other way. We are the universe, and we know it. We are all united by the thread of love. I feel so much love. The universe is saturated with love. Every speck is filled with the love of God. Your DNA is love manifest. You are a blueprint of God. You are created by God. You are an image of God. God does not have a human form, yet you were created in his image. God does not have a gender. The image of God can't be seen externally. It only lies within. That's why all the great masters have said, to find the precious jewel within, there you will discover your true nature. Surfers ride the ocean waves. Mystic rides the waves of love. Both of them get incredible rides. I'm both a surfer and a mystic. I'm having a ride of my life. Love truly is the essence of life. We're all looking for it. The world desperately needs it. We have been fighting for so long. We spent 16 years in Afghanistan, 
and we will never win that war. War is obsolete. Love is truly the answer. When humanity will truly embrace and discover love within, the world will be at peace. Love is practical. It serves a purpose. War is not practical. Not unless you think to bring young boys back in a box. I'm all for being a patriot to your country. Yet this war machine has got to stop. War is the absence of love. War only divides man. Love unites. Even when the entire world discovers its true nature, there will be conflicts. Yet, these will be peaceful conflicts. They will be solved by compromise. Swords will never be drawn. The politicians will be skilled with words. They will know how to communicate from deep within. They won't be like some today who speaks what comes to their mind. Big difference. Love will show the way. I feel so much love. The universe is keeping me alive. Ponder this hope. You are a piece of this puzzle. think outside of the box. Personally, I think that humanity needs to think outside of the box. Both the Indian concept of karma and the works of Carl Sagan studied the subconscious mind or alignment. Modern day scientists are saying the same thing. Mankind is playing the same tapes over and over again. History goes in cycles. War, war, and war. We've been fighting for ever so long. We are running on a treadmill and going nowhere. Karma is running our life in the past, not the present. Imagine 95% of our actions are dictated by our subconscious, yet we are not aware of it. This has been going on for thousands of years. It is literally hardwired into our system. Karma is displayed in each and every action we take. It does not judge us. It's simply like a hard drive, storing all our subconscious memories. You can't separate your thoughts and emotions. Both of them are intertwined. Karma is simply playing the same tapes over and over again. It is not the universe playing some joke on you, yet it is you playing the joke on yourself. The universe does not judge. We do a great job of judging ourselves and others. Thinking outside of the box is the answer to life. In order to start thinking outside the box, one must see that life is a series of cycles and patterns. It's like Groundhog Day, yet the cycles are longer. Many people who study the past can predict the future based upon our past actions. History repeats itself. We spend most of our time oblivious to this. In the East, this concept has been known for thousands of years. It is a part of their culture. It even still is at a subconscious level, is not truly realized. At this present moment, only a small portion of humanity is discovering their true nature and thinking outside of the box. As I said before, 
mystics and modern day scientists are merging today. So many incredible discoveries are happening. Scientists are studying the scientific aspects of meditation. Just think, in the 70s, a brainwave capturing device cost about $20,000. Today, it costs in the $150 to a $250 range. These devices have many different types of guided meditations to assist you on your way. Many of them use binary, binary beats, which Robert Monroe discovered in the mid-50s. Binary beats are two different signals, one going into the left ear and the other going into the right ear. Both of these create a wave which creates synchronicity between the left and right hemisphere. They are great training wheels for beginners. It's being used in all levels of life. It makes the journey a lot easier. Scientists have mapped out the various brainwave states. The goal is to be consciously aware of the quantum field in each and every moment. These devices are stepping stones to be used. For thousands of years, people used fire, chanting, and doing mantras, mantras to get into this state. Science is helping to bridge that gap. There are countless methods out there to assist you in reprogramming your subconscious. These are exciting times. Mankind is slowly learning to think outside of the box. Remember, only you can change. Nobody can do the work for you. Signposts are all around. Can you imagine signposts all around? But do we have eyes to see? Nature is alive and communicating with each other. But we have cell phones in our hands. Magic is all around us, but we can't see it. Imagine the mysteries of life are all around us but we don't see them. This is the journey of walking from darkness to light. We think we have all the answers, yet we are living in darkness. If we think we are living in the light, then why have we been fighting for thousands of years? Why do we have guns and violence? Why do we have 45 billion years? We have more money than half the population. This is a journey we are walking on. Kids, you have a say in this matter. The torch someday will be passed to you. Someday you will lead the way. Take a look at the sun in the sky. It just shines. It has nothing to prove. Its rays keep the entire Earth alive. Now, that's true magic. It's not a sleight of hand. It's not some magic tricks that appear real, but it's not. It's the real deal. Every step you take over time, you can start to see the signposts are all around you. You'll begin to see the majesty of the geese and ducks flying in the air. You will love to hear the geese honking in the sky. It will bring a chip down your back. You begin to learn to sit on a park bench and to only take the beauty that surrounds you. You can close your eyes and tap in to reach with nature. Nature is alive. How about not getting bored? You don't need to have your cell phone with you 24 hours a day. Yes, you can still have your cell phone, but it will be different. Imagine looking into your friend's eyes and seeing yourself. Whoever he may encounter, you see a reflection of yourself. How can you harm anyone in that state? There is no more flaming posts on the enemy. No more bullying. No more sexual harassment. 
this would be a thing of the past. How about no more school shootings, no more wars, no more guns and violence, no more crime? If you think this can happen, then think again. Your civilization is only 50,000 years old. There are worlds out there that have existed before the universe was born. They had to take small baby steps along the way. Ultimately, some succeeded. They could go out and help others on this journey of life. Help is on the way, yet you have to ask for it. You see, you have free will. That's the law of the universe. The universe is playing a hide-and-seek game with you. This is the game of life. This is the greatest game ever played. It will go on for eternity. So you are a piece of the puzzle. Your piece is super important. Imagine having billions of pieces of the puzzle put together. Yet there's a missing piece. It's yours. Will the puzzle be complete? Now one is missing and it's yours. You can begin to learn how to be a global citizen of the universe. You can learn how to be kind. You can learn how to have love and compassion for your fellow man. You can learn how to have patience and tolerance. You will once again discover the laws of the universe exist inside of you. You will start pulling all the negative beings from your garden inside. And you can do this. Yours isn't the first one, nor are you the last one to walk from darkness to light. You see, you aren't alone. How would you like to feel that there's a great coach inside of you? You can actually feel it. It's so familiar. It's a part of you. How about a part of you that's already the universe? And a part of you lives in this world. You have the potential to realize this on a daily basis. In the early 1950s, Roger Bannister read, ran a sub-minute, sub-four-minute mile. Nobody thought it was possible. Months later, the barrier was broken, and even some high schoolers did this. You have the same potential. There is a precious jewel that lies within you. Millions of people are waking up from their slumber. Signpost is all around. Just open up your eyes. The story continues. Are our politicians who sent innocent men to war hungry for the kill? Why would you send innocent ones to die on the battlefield? You are not doing your job. You are paid to be diplomat, diplomats. There is a way to solve this issue. You gave up and said, that's the only <coughs> solution. Is there a part of you that takes responsibility for your actions. How do you sleep at night? Are you a career politician? I'm only interested in getting elected. I have no concerns for my fellow man. I'm the best leader. I will slander my opponent. We need to change. Leaders must truly lead without selfish interests. Let's change the system.
we are all angels falling from heaven. Before we were born, we were angels. Every single one of us, over time, we lost our true nature. We became bitter with love. There is no gravity. The world sucks. This is our motto. Our true nature is to soar and lie. We were meant to fly. How did we go astray? How did we forget our true nature? Angels falling from heaven. You can solve this riddle. When you laugh, the universe is laughing. Laughter is the energy of joy. It ripples throughout the universe. Have you seen that even if you are sad, laughter will take your sadness away? Laughter is God's way to say, I'm always with you. You are never alone. When you laugh, you become alive. You start to wake up. Who am I? We go through such human drama. Laughter is the medicine to help heal us. No wonder we love comics. They can tell you things you would never say to one another. By doing that, it makes us laugh. God is the greatest comic alive. He just says no while you are alive. That is the greatest punchline. Is this life the greatest show on earth? Is this life a circus? Or are we going around in circles? As P.T. Barnum said, a sucker is born every moment. It seems that man has been in a rut for a very long time. It seems to be so long that many think we will blow this circus apart. I don't think so. Peace will be on this earth. The greatest show on earth is taking place. We, as a whole, want peace. The light is shining. The light will dispel the darkness of night. Discover who you truly are. You will then solve this riddle. This life is a riddle. You are alive to solve the riddle of life. Who am I? Many different riddles have been presented to you. Have you seen anything in common? All the riddles point to going within. The answers don't exist outside of you. The answers are hidden within. They have always been there. You've been looking in the wrong places. All the great masters have said the same thing. The kingdom of heaven lies within. If there is a hint to solve the riddle of life, there it is. Remember, only you can solve this riddle. Nobody can do it for you. You can solve this riddle. Your actions change the universe. Did you know that? <laughs> What? No way. You gotta be kidding me. I'm so small and the universe is so big. Have you heard of the butterfly effect? It says a small cause can have a large effect. In the vocation of man, 1800, 
Fitch says that you cannot remove a single grain of sand from its place without thereby changing something throughout all parts of the measurable whole. This is taken from Wikipedia. In 1972, Philip Morales concocted, does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? As a title, although a butterfly flapping its wings has remained constant in the expression of this concept, the location of the butterfly, the consequences, and the location of the consequences have varied widely. Imagine throwing a stone into a pool. You can see practically ripples that are spread across the pond. Now imagine every action we take sends ripples across the universe. What if the universe is alive and conscious? If every action we take has a ripple effect, our actions change the universe. Unfortunately, most of us just carry on in life in a reactive mode. We react to whatever comes our way. We aren't consciously, consciously aware that we can be co-creators in our life. We can be in harmony with nature and the universe. In other words, we can experience our actions having a ripple effect throughout the, the universe. Imagine what would happen to a civilization that understood this concept. We are new kids on the block. As new kids, we have a lot to learn. War is not the answer. How far have we evolved emotionally and spiritually? <laughs> not very much. Just take a look at the news. Just think, there are probably civilizations that are older than a billion years. Many of them are probably light years ahead in understanding the universe. They overcome all their obstacles that we had a long time ago. War, famine, crime, etc. have left their world eons ago. Every person had to find his true nature inside of him. Only by understanding your true nature and experiencing your true essence can a civilization grow. We send satellites in the sky, and maybe we go 16,000 miles per second. We creep along at a, at a snail pace. Even if we traveled at 186,000 miles per second, it would take around two years to get to the closest star. What if a civilization realized that there is a universal field that exists everywhere? This field is interconnection, interconnected. Imagine that you can go anywhere in the universe in less than a second. You wouldn't need a mechanical vehicle to take you there. Now just think that this civilization understood these laws of physics. They reached a point where they were the sun, moon, and stars walking around in a human body. How advanced would they be? They understood the mechanics of the seen and unseen energies of life. Our present day science Science says that most of our DNA is junk. Does God make junk? Maybe these civilizations realize that most of the junk DNA is multidimensional DNA. They have the power to tap into it. Recently, our society is beginning to think the same. Can we change our DNA? Yes. Can a human do it uh, consciously with intent? Yes. We are taking baby steps. We are learning along the way. What does this have to do with your actions change the universe? I believe we are evolving where we can consciously be aware of the field. The more we are aware of it consciously, the more we can feel the ripple effects of our actions. This is not some wishy-washy idea. Many of the great mystics said the same thing using language of their time. We have a law. We have a long ways to go, yet I feel there is an evolution, revolution of love that is happening on this planet. There are millions of people on this planet who have the same vision. Remember that light dispels darkness. Never before have we seen this golden opportunity. It may look that darkness has won the war, yet light is stirring up the darkness. Dark 
Theotokos says, nowhere to hide. At this time, at the time of Christ, people noticed an incredible aura around the Christ. He was different. He was full of love and compassion. People felt this. He understood that his actions affected the universe. He was aware and in harmony with his Father. We had the same opportunity to do so. We come from the same place he did. It's time for a new act. Mankind has been acting for a very long time. It seems we have been performing for a very long time. It's like the record we are playing is always repeating itself. War, war, and war. Anger, anger, and anger. For centuries, we have played the same track. It's time for a new track. Let's drop these old energies forever. Let's embrace peace, love, and tolerance. Be kind. Be thoughtful towards your fellow man. <coughs> Learn from your mistakes. There is a new way to act within this divine play. Discover your new role. Become one with it perfected. You will have solved your piece of the puzzle. One by one, peace will be on earth. For thousands of years, Western's man ego has been totally out of control. The ego should be balanced between masculine and feminine. Unfortunately, the masculine has been dominated this planet. Wars have been fought all over the world. Man likes to conquer. If each male would balance themselves with love, patience, tolerance, and compassion, this world would be in a better place. There are some of the qualities of the female ego. We should have the mixture of the two. In reality, God is not male or female. Yet, on this earth, we have a duality. Man has been taught not to express feminine qualities. The world we live in is the examples of man not being in balance. We need to solve this puzzle. Greetings. Welcome to another talk. We are happy to be here. Life is glorious. Your world is going through many changes. I don't have to tell you that. It's very important to be centered. Don't let the political affairs today affect you emotionally. Don't let it get you angry. You can't fight fire with fire. You can put water on the fire. You can arise beyond the anger and let your true nature take over. There are new energies on this planet kindness, compassion, tolerance, patience, and love. These are the new energies to embrace. Let go of the old energies, anger, fear, war, intolerance, etc. This planet doesn't need these energies anymore. They never led to any positive outcomes. Our world needs to be united, not divided. We are one family. We are intelligent enough to be united. Look at the past. Wars have come and gone because we are not united. <clears throat> we can do this. Each one of us is responsible. Don't spew anger on Facebook. If someone has a different point of view, speak from your heart. Listen to the other side. They are not your enemy. They are in pain too. Many times they express pain it's through anger. Change your attitude. Don't let the old energies control your life. You won't be able to think properly. The old doesn't want to lose control. It truly is a battle between light and darkness. There is a way to convey your thoughts without stooping down to their level. Look at the Dalai Lama. 
He uses humor to convey his message. Speak from your heart. The universe is watching you. We can change our way of thinking. We can change our point of view. We need to become mature adults. Stop, look, and listen before you speak. Don't be reactive. Most of all, be kind. Be kind to your fellow man. Laugh, play, be considerate, come from your heart. Don't ridicule or mock others. Don't insult others. You are neither right nor wrong. If you do these things, the situation will change. You can't fight a war if your enemy is your friend. You can't fight a war if the other person truly tries to understand your pain and tries to help you. We need to help each other. America is divided. We all want the same thing. Our system is broken. People have lost faith. We are tired that our political system is not working for us. We need to change. We need to change our attitude. We need to see that we all want the same thing, but we have a different point of view. The Democrats and Republicans are enemies. Both sides are beautiful. They just need to stop playing petty games and cooperate with one another. They need to compromise. They need to truly listen to one another and not play childish games with one another. They act like children in a sandbox throwing sand at one another. It's time for the political system to become emotionally mature. We need mature leaders. We need our leaders to really think about the situation and not speak without thinking. This could be of serious consequences. A war can be started this way. America is at a crossroads. Which way are we going? It truly is up to each one of us. Let go of your fears of your fellow man. We are a melting pot. We need to show the world our true values. The world is concerned about us. Most of the political leaders around the world are highly concerned. Many of our relationships with these countries are at pearl. We are on shaky footing. The carpet could be pulled from our feet. Nuclear war is not the answer. We shouldn't even think that is an option. War would never solve any problems. We are capable to have other solutions. We need to lose the mentality of wars altogether. Last week, I heard on NPR radio this fascinating story. A group of scientists was studying animal behavior. They studied a group of chickens for three years. These scientists took the so-called brightest and smartest chickens and placed them into a group. The so-called normal chickens were placed into another group. After three years, they saw the results of the test. Out of 30 chickens, only three survived. They fought and killed one another. It was definitely the strongest survived. No sense of cooperation, no harmony whatsoever. These chickens were living in hell, but no sense of purpose. War is what they knew how to do. Well, the normal chickens live like what chickens do. They laid eggs and were content. No fighting occurred among them. They had nothing to prove. Everyone thrived in this environment. <coughs> well, this discussion changed course. Then they started to take a look at the top 10 Ivy League schools. They're super hard to get into. The average student would thrive at another college. Yet, they found out this creating conditions 
just like the chicken study. These students were placed in a situation where you always had to be the best. You learned to cheat, steal, and lie to the top. Mind you, I'm not saying all students are like that, but the intense pressure is there to perform. Knowing that these top colleges place students into the top Fortune 500 companies today, their psychology is embedded directly into the work environment. It's subtle, yet there. As a worker, you're only valued for your performance, period. This places a lot of stress on the worker. As a worker, you fight your way to the top. There are only so many promotions to go around. You live in fear of layoffs. Your CEO makes probably a thousand times that you do. They then take a look at the present day politics. Need I say more? Constant bickering and fighting, no cooperation, name calling is the name of the game. There is no sign of discrimination. We have a media that is either one side or the other. Both sides can hardly speak to one another. Our president has told so many lies that nobody knows what truth is. Just one of his major blunders would have brought a past president to resign. How many affairs has the president had that the Christian majority still support him? Well, the rest of the chickens are living their lives. They're going to school, they have friends and family, they go to work, they go on vacations. They are good people. They love their fellow man. I'm not saying there are problems. There are tons of them. I remember people always talk about Darwin's theory survival of the fittest. Did you know that Darwin considered this to be the lowest in his view of evolution? His view was cooperation. Nature cooperates with each other. The entire world of nature is in cooperation with each other. If nature did not cooperate, this planet would have been gone a long time ago. This is the main theme that the scientists discovered. Without cooperation, we are doomed. We must reclaim this. We are all Americans. We aren't just Republicans or Democrats. We are united. It's about time for us to wake up. I see a new wave of hope occurring in us today. People are starting to wake up and demand for change. Christians are waiting for the rapture. <clears throat> God will blow this earth to smithereens. God won't do this. Humans will. Yet man has reached a turning point where this won't happen. Man has decided that peace on earth is the way. I know it doesn't seem that way. Wars are all around us. Yet the light of God is dispelling darkness on this land. Many people like you and me are bringing light to this planet. Only humans can bring peace to this planet. God is there as our coach. He will not play the game for us. We have to play the game. These are exciting times. The world wants peace. Let the dust settle. If we could only see like God, you would have no enemies. People might call you an enemy, yet, or you can see our friends. Christ did not judge his fellow man. Buddha did not either. They showed us a different way to live. They didn't try to convince us. Their state of being was divine. They were like the sun in the sky, always shining. Even when there are clouds in the sky, the sun is always shining. The great masters always were shining. They didn't have anything to prove. Their ego was not in their way. They came to help mankind. We had lost our way.
Can you imagine, before you were born, <coughs> you and God were together. You are the universe. We come into this world, and slowly through time, we forget where we came from. Over time, we completely forget. Yet God placed a beacon inside of us. Maybe at nighttime, you might come out of a dream, sensing that I'm more than this human body. A nudge here and there. The beacon is always broadcasting. You are never alone. The signal of life is keeping you alive. The great mystery lies inside of your heart. You alone can solve this mystery. The beacon lies within. Open up your heart. Closing. Let's close this chapter on war for good. All it takes is for you to solve this puzzle.